but here's how banks can make money. There are several different ways. The first one in your book on page 211 is what they call a loan origination fee. A loan origination fee. A loan origination fee is the fee that the consumer pays to the bank to originate, that means to start a loan. So it's called a loan origination fee. When a bank charges the consumer a loan origination fee, they will quote it in this word. So many points. A point by definition is 1% of the very important loan, not 1% of the purchase price. It's 1% of the loan. All the bank really cares about is their money, not yours, not your equity. So if you borrow 80 grand, you borrow 80,000, and they charge you two points to do it, you all see that 80,000 times 2% is $1,600. That's how much loan origination fee would be if the lender says, we're charging you two points to do the loan. This is one way that the bank can make money. All right, so it's very key you understand a point is 1% of the loan amount, not purchase price. So if someone's buying, let's do an example. Let me go back over here, do this, clear it out. If they're buying a $300,000 house and they're getting a 70% loan to value and the bank says, we're going to charge you one point for that loan, how much did the consumer pay for that loan. Three thousand. Oh, dissension in the crowds, I hear it. Twenty one hundred I know. Remember they pay based on the loan amount. Mm -hmm. So it's a three hundred thousand dollar purchase but you're borrowing 70%, so you're only borrowing $210,000. Okay. Because 70% of 300 is 210. So you would calculate your loan origination fee based upon the 210, 1% of that is $2,100. That's okay. how much a consumer's loan origination fee would be on the their example. So it's the point based on the loan, not the purchase. All right. Do another one. We can do another one, sure. They're buying a three hundred thousand. Uh, let's not do that one. We just did that number. Let's do this one. $145,000 house. They've got 100% loan to value. And they're paying two and a half points on the loan. How much is it? $3,625. dollars So in this particular case, how much is the loan? It's 145,000 because they told you they've got a 100% loan to value. 
So you would take two and a half points or two and a half percent of the 145,000, you would get $3,625 as the loan origination fee. That is 0 0.025 times 145,000 equals that number. Did you get it? The key here is translating the purchase into the loan amount. And you would do that with that loan to value ratio that we just talked about earlier. In this particular case, it's 100%. So that means the purchase price and the loan are the exact same number because it was 100% loan to value. Cool. Now, there is a second way that banks can make money, and it's calculated the exact same way. It's called a discount point. The good thing for you guys is the math is the same. It's still a percentage based upon the loan amount. So if we went back to this example on the board over here, and I told you, that in the discount points, they also charge two and a half percent on that deal. How much would it be? Well, the answer is exactly the same because they calculate them the same. $145,000 purchase, 100% loan to value. So the loan is 145,000 times two and a half points is $3,625 again. It's the same math. A discount point is defined as the difference between what the investor wanted to make and what the bank actually got for them. So Jed Clamp has got a billion dollars. He goes into Mr. Drysdale and says, I'm going to give you a billion dollars. I want 2% return on my money. Let's change that. Let's say 3%. Better. This is a better, in today's industry right now, it's a better deal. I want 3% of my billion. The bank says, we'll give you 3%. But all of a sudden, the market now is two and a half percent to loan money out. How does the bank repay 3% to clamp it if they're only loaning it to you at two and a half? There is a difference there between what the investor wanted to get and what he actually got. So the bank would charge a discount point. Here's the confusion. That discount doesn't mean to you. They have discounted that 3% down to 2.5, so you've got to pay a price for that. All right? But the math is exactly the same. Thumbs up? All right. So that's the second way, it's called a discount point. They're both based on points and they're both calculated exactly the same. Now, here's a third way, and you know that this method actually had to involve attorney getting drunk, because there's no way in the real world somebody would actually think of this, in my opinion. It is called a prepayment penalty. Prepayment penalty. A lot of times you hear the slang called a P3, prepayment penalty. All right. And a prepayment penalty is a penalty that the consumer would pay back to the bank if the consumer gave the money back early. What? You, you want to bring me my money early? We're going to bill you for that. That seems ludicrous to me, all right? 
So let me give you an example of the best way to think of it. Here's a true, what they call a 531 prepayment penalty. 531. This prepayment penalty is three years in length. And you know that because there are three numbers there. There's a five, there's a three, and there's a one. So that means it's three years in length. The first year, if you pay it back, you pay a 5% penalty to pay it back. So if you borrowed $80,000 and you paid it off early, hey, I was at the casino last night and I hit a big hit, I'm gonna go pay my mortgage off. You actually would have to pay 5% penalty on that 80 grand which translates to $4,000. Think about that. You got to pay a $4,000 penalty to give them their money back. That doesn't seem right. That is a prepayment penalty. Now, we can play the game a little further. Obviously, the second year penalty is only 3%. Why is it only 3%? Why is it smaller than this first number? Because you have already paid one year of payments to the bank. Get it? You've made one year of payments, so you're in your second year. They're only going to penalize you 3%. 3% of that 80 grand is $2,400. So if you paid it off in the second year, you would pay a penalty of $2,400. In the third year, 1% or $800 penalty because you've already paid back two years of the loan. That is a 531 prepayment penalty. They have got three one prepayment penalties. How many years is that one? Two years. There's only two numbers, a three and a one. Your first year, you pay 3%. Your second year, you pay 1%. And then after it's over, it is what they called freely payable. So in this example on the board, the 531, in your fourth year, you could pay it off with no penalty, all right? Penalty the first year, 5%. Penalty the second year of 3%. And a penalty the third year of 1%. And then the fourth year, freely payable, all right? So now the question is, well, if that's the, is there an advantage? Yes. Most banks, when you buy a prepayment or have your loan has a prepayment, will actually charge you one eighth to one quarter percent lower than the market because they've got you locked in for a certain period of time. So, does anybody see an advantage to a prepayment penalty? Yes, there are. Remember way back in chapter one, we talked about the word counseling, and I said you will counsel your client. Think about this. If your client said, hey Raymond, we wanna move into Center Grove School District because we heard it's the best school in the world, we want little Johnny, who's in first grade, to graduate from Center Grove. What did you just hear? How long are those people going to be in Center Grove? Exactly, Cameron. About 20 years. I just told you that they're going to be in Center Grove for 12 to 15 years, right? Does a three-year prepayment penalty bother them? 
No. But they would get a discounted rate by taking it. So they could potentially take a 531 prepayment penalty, which lasts three years, but they told you they're going to live there for 15. Why not get the lower interest rate? Because those first three years aren't going to bother them at all. They're going to live there. So potentially, based on your counseling of your client, you might go, hey, you know what? We can probably get you a better deal with a prepayment penalty because it doesn't matter. You're not going to pay it off. Now, the other side of that coin, you have an investor that comes to you and says, hey, Raymond, I want to buy a property in the city. I want to rehab it, and I'm going to sell it in the next 6 to 12 months. Can you help me get a loan? Yes. But. We certainly don't want to get a loan with a prepayment penalty. You are only going to hold this for six months. You told me you're going to pay it off. So we better take the higher interest rate so we don't get a 5% penalty for you to pay it off. So this is where counseling comes in with your client at the very beginning. You know, depending on what you heard from your client, you could potentially go, oh, let's get this loan, save the interest rate over the course of 30 years. We're going to save you 80 grand over the course of your life because we're going to get a prepayment penalty. All right. So now that is the note and how the note works.